Yo, it's Mike Isratel on my fitness channel, Renaissance Periodization. I always say, hey, folks, and I say, Dr. Mike here. Uh, I might as well just go back to that. Just fucking, I'm still Dr. Mike. I'm not a doctor or any of this. And hey, folks, is nice to say because I'm just used to it. But then I'll have to remember to say, uh, here for the Making Progress channel, and this is, in fact, video number five, winning every argument, quote, unquote, Arguing to learn and convince. So last time we went over why disagreements happen and why they can actually be a great thing. And the TLDR on that is they give us a different perspective so we can all get closer to the truth. But there is a spectrum in the situation of disagreement that let's say two people can have. One end of the spectrum is after the disagreement is broached to some extent, is like, oh my God, thank you so much for showing me um, the information you had available. And this is super great. And I, it was learning experience. And I feel like we're both closer to truth. Hey, yep. Slow clap. Everyone's happy. And the other hand is like, fuck you, die. You're like, all right. Well, that was informative. So disagreements can get pretty intense, but the intensity of disagreement lies on a spectrum. And all disagreements are somewhere on that spectrum, mostly in the middle. Some can get pretty heated and some can be very congenial indeed. So since the first end of the spectrum or the one which is fuck you die, um, since that end of the spectrum is, eh, let's say not so productive, uh, then, you know, maybe it's not a really great thing to try to argue like that because not a lot gets accomplished. And in this case, winning the argument means that both sides get closer to the truth. Imagine that you had a five man team of hunters that were going out and there was this big Smilodon fucking saber tooth tiger thing that was trying to kill you motherfuckers and you were trying to kill it. And you had this unified strategy that you were going to fucking employ some decoys, some spear throwers, some stabber people, the shit falls in a fucking trench, you know, classic 10,000 years ago type of shit. And one of the people in the group was not on the same page with the strategy. If you win an argument against him about the strategy, what does winning look like? It looks like you both come closer to the truth. He goes, listen, I don't want to do this plan because one of us is going to fucking die. If we do this other plan, the survival chances are improved. And you're like, okay, but this other part of our plan, which you left out is also good. And you guys are both like, okay, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Huh, fuck, 100%. This is going to fucking work. And you get out there and because you won the argument, Really winning the argument is you come closer to the truth, which means your probability of fucking that uh, uh, saber tooth tiger in the ass goes up and you go in there, you stab him to death and he's like, but I have all tiger cubs. That's the last thing he says before he dies. You're like, damn, life is a motherfucker. This shit is, I thought we were the winners. Anyway, you eat him and you fucking take his horns, you make him into jewelry or whatever, his teeth. And then everything is great. If you think that winning an argument means like you diss the other guy, like, boom, fuck you, pussy. And he's like, oh, shit, I got served. And the other three people are, ha, ha, they're laughing because you, well, that guy's a fucking bitch. What an idiot. The tiger is going to kill all of you because you're no closer to the truth, no closer to cogent strategy. Winning an argument, being dissing someone is cool at comedy shows, pointless political debates where talking heads say nothing at all and just try to embarrass each other. The entirety of Ben Shapiro's content, I'm kidding. Somewhat. Ben, I'm saying family, baby. One tribe. You hear You hear me? Look at my last name. Anyway, I'm going to get canceled. Uh, it is not a lot of use, it's useless. Now, it feels nice to win arguments in the classical sense of like dissing someone. Then they like, you know, tuck tail and run. But real winning is getting closer to truth together. I know that sounds so fucking lame in third grade, but it's true. And it's especially true when there's a fucking saber tooth tiger running around. Or the problem is how do we come to an understanding about how to make sure AI doesn't kill us all and, and simply um, gives us a cornucopia of amazing things. Real world arguments are one when the parties get closer to the truth. That's what winning is to us. And we have an important question to answer because the stakes are non-zero. Sometimes they're low, sometimes they're very high, but they're often not zero. Because the stakes are important, we have an important question to answer, which is how do we argue in such a way ourselves? How do we proceed in an argument, in a disagreement, 
that increases the chances that we land on the side of the spectrum closer to, oh, wow, thank you so much for, for educating me and vice versa. And we're closer to truth than on the side of the spectrum that really sucks, which is to say, how do we argue in ways that help us learn and convince the best, which is to say, how do we argue in ways that bring us all together closer to the truth? There is a technique here. It can be broken down in a few ways. Here's my take in it, and it is a four-step process. Step one is to learn the other person or entities. We'll say person for the, you know, most most of us argue against people, not large language models. They're like, hey, GPT-5. It's like, yes, you suck. And it's like, sure do, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is no fun. I wish it argued back. And then it argues back and it's like, I'm going to kill you by zapping you with your cell phone radiation. And you're like, I should have never started with this thing. In any case, human on human. Step one is you learn the other person's perspective. Step two is you invite them to address questions very politely that you have about their perspective. Those questions are why you think they might not be completely correct, by the way. Step three is you recapitulate or restate The intermediate perspective now coalescing between you two, a new understanding, a new better, probably, approach to the truth. And then step four, not to be forgotten, is to egress from the situation politely, which has its own values I'll talk about in just a bit. All right, here we go. So, number one, learning the other individual's perspective. It's easy as fuck to just talk truth to people like rap battle style. It's better if it rhymes. It also has an ethnic urban vibe. I'm joking. There are two problems with just saying shit to people and hopefully they hear it and understand you completely. First of all, most folks don't tend to like to hear that shit. People like to be heard and understood, not talked at on average, especially not talked at by people they don't consider superior to them. If your pastor tells you some shit, you're like, oh yeah, it's the fucking word of God. Like fucking write it down. If your doctor tells you some shit, you're like, yeah, okay, doc, fine, fuck. But if like just a friend of yours or a family member or a politician from an opposing side tells you some shit, you'd be like, bro, what? I'm sorry, nah. Number two is you might not, as you're talking to someone at them, you might not even be sure what that person's position actually is. So you could be speaking at cross purposes entirely unknowingly the whole time, and you could have just made a ton of great ground and consensus and learned a lot if you didn't weren't just shooting words at people's faces. So the first thing to do in a serious discussion in which it doesn't have to be like gravely serious, but in a discussion which you actually want to learn some shit and to bring people closer together to the truth, you want to do is ask questions and just try to understand at least the basics, possibly even the details of their perspective on the matter. It's a fucking weird idea, right? That before you start arguing with someone, you actually try to understand where they're coming from. And listen, I'm not your fucking first grade or kindergarten teacher. I'm not about to put you onto some bullshit, hippy dippy fucking shit where it's like, oh, it's always important to understand the other person's perspective because everyone has a wisdom of their own. Fuck that. Some people are dumb as rocks or wrong as shit. You could be completely right about the shit, but you want to make sure you understand what the fuck it is they're saying. So you could be like in your head. Yep. That guy's dumb as shit about to serve his dumb ass up or two. Holy fuck. Okay. Actually a little bit different than I thought or wow. Holy fuck. We agree or wow. Holy fuck. I don't even know what he said. All those options are possible. You can never be too certain without at least some trying to understand where they're coming from. We're not trying to do it because of hippy dippy and everyone demands respect. Fuck that. We're trying to do it because it's just effective in bringing us closer to the truth, period. So once you talk to them and ask them questions about kind of what they think about the relevant matters, you can at least do two things. One is see where their position has holes. You're like, oh, you think that, that that's scientifically invalid. So I'm about to write that down and fuck you up for it in just a bit. And, or you can learn a ton and improve your knowledge. I mean, you could be discussing the law with someone you think is just a regular Joe, but it turns out they're like a decorated police officer. And they're like, yeah, so de jure, I hear you. But de facto, this is what happens in the street. You're like, de jure, de facto, motherfucker, this ain't Latin class. I'm trying to be a lawyer. Oh, wait, that is law. Damn. Tell me more about what happens in the street. I want to know these things. So your knowledge is getting uplifted or at the very least you're getting exposed to knowledge from them that has all these fucking Swiss cheese size holes in it that you can at least know where the holes are and know where you're going to be attacking the disagreement next. So hearing out the other person is super, super important. 
That's where point number two comes in. Step number two in our four-step arguing to convince process. If you spot any questionable ideas or claims or logical connections, you have to ask polite questions about them, asking for some clarification. So if you want clarification only, and you're not trying to insert any awareness of the person's incongruencies in there, you can ask the questions pretty directly, but politely is better than not because people have egos and asking a curt question can give you backlash and an intractable barrier against further discourse that just serves nobody. So you can ask a question like if you're debating student debt, you can say, so when you're saying it's a good idea to cancel student debt, do you mean like student debt for the people that have already accrued it? Or also like for people in school now, plus those accrued it or people like in people who have accrued it already, people who already paid it off. Do we give them money back? And then people who are in school now who are accumulating it or also people who will be in the school in the future in perpetuity. Like, do we just want, do we, is canceling all student debt your fill in for just free school for everyone? Cause that's totally dope opinion that we could talk about. I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. Right. So that kind of clarification, probably with less swearing and using the word dope is uh, is a good thing because that can be something that allows you to understand the situation better and at least teaches you stuff or tells you how they're wrong and how you're going to attack them next. Attack like that stupid saber-toothed tiger. In any case, um, there's 10,000 different ways to do this politely. Over the course of this channel, I'll probably be illustrating a bunch of them organically if this ever turns into a podcast where I interview live human beings, two things will become apparent. One, my odor, body odor will result in subsequent inability to attract further guests. And uh, two, you might get to see some of the shit in real life where I go the undertone route. And here's the deal. You're trying not to piss people off. You're trying to step really lightly. So you could say things like, and I'll just give you one example now. So, you know, I think you're onto something. Can you explain this part a bit more? And that could be if they're totally off the rocker or totally wrong, you still technically think they're onto something and you want it explained more. And if you present it like that very politely, worst case, they're just like explain to you the shit and you're like, wow, that's wrong. You don't say that. Best case is they explain to you the shit and you can argue to convince and things get better. So it's really, really awesome. And actually best case is they explain the shit and it makes total sense. You're like, holy shit, I have your opinion now. Holy fuck. Thank God for explaining that. Now, if you want to introduce, because you're, you're inviting them to address questions, right? If you want to introduce the incongruencies, ask them to address the things that are, just don't make a lot of sense as far as you can tell. It often helps to remove yourself as the progenitor, the generator, the genesis of the incongruencies and switch to a third party perspective because ego, right? A lot of times in disagreements, it's framed as me versus you. Not like there's a bunch of knowledge that we have, most of which we didn't come up with ourselves. And there's this path we're trying to take together towards the truth. Uh, most people have a hard time seeing it that way. And so do I, when I'm involved in a really nasty online debate at midnight, my wife's like, honey, come make sweet love to me. And I'm like, hold on a second. Someone on the internet thinks that exercise science and sports science is the same thing, but it's not, it's, it's, there's nuanced difference. In any case, how do you remove yourself as the sort of progenitor of the disagreement? There's a bunch of different ways to do this. I'll share at least one with you now. You don't want to come at it and say something like this. So you know, like you're arguing about, uh, here's a fun argument, uh, whether or not brushing your teeth is a good idea on the margins. And you say, you know, you could say, you do realize that brushing your teeth is a good idea, right? It's uh, needlessly combative, sarcastic, implies that they're stupid all the wrong ways. Better to take a third party approach and an approach of implied uncertainty. You're not a hundred percent sure that the retort you were about to provide is true. Why? Because you're not, because you're actually as a scientifically minded person, not hundred percent sure about anything. Some things you're very sure about, but still not hundred percent. So you step aside, you realize the actual philosophy of the situation is that you are relatively uncertain and you introduce this fact or this incongruency from a third party perspective, something like, you know, I'm definitely not sure about this. 
But I heard that something like 95% of dentists think that brushing your teeth is a good idea. What do you think? What do you think about that? You're asking them for their opinion, which people usually love to share. And your criticism isn't really your criticism. Don't kill the messenger. You're just sharing it. I mean, I'm not 95% of all dentists. Although I think I could probably beat up 95%. Hey, Scott video guy, will you have me in a fight against 95% of all dentists? Not at the same time. One at a time. Do they get to use their tools? Fuck that, bro. They're just going to Nas canister me and I'll be passed out and I'll wake up and I'll be in the dentist chair with the dentist movie, which is a movie I'll never watch because who the fuck watches shit like that? You ever seen the dentist movies? The horror movies? Oh, yeah, you should. Fuck that. In any case, a great intro to very many questions that you want to ask the person, but you don't want to be like, uh, you say, I'm not sure about this, but what would you say about XYZ's thoughts on the matter? You could do this with all kinds of issues. Gun control, there's one that's fucking toxic as shit when you debate it with real people. You say, um, you know, I'm not really sure what an assault rifle is, but like this one YouTuber who like seems to know guns, I don't know. And it could be uh, Coleon Noir who knows like everything about guns. So like, he says like an assault rifle is not really like a technical term. It's kind of like, like a term we just use in popular culture. There's no such thing as an assault rifle. There's like rifles and carbines, semi-auto, all that stuff. It's maybe a bit more complicated. What, what do you think about that? Because I, I don't know. Maybe it's just a gun nut. And are you curious of what they have to say? Because a lot of people, when they realize you're onto some bullshit, the AKA truth, they'll soften their shit. Especially when they know you're not trying to fucking just hard nose them into it. They'll say, well, yeah, no, no. Okay. Yeah. There's no really such thing as an assault rifle, but you know what I mean? The shit people kill children with at schools. And, and then you have a more productive discussion because they've admitted like, yeah, okay, there's at least some nuances, which is a good thing, which is a very good thing. There's, there's a light for truth there somewhere. Step three, after one to potentially five, 10, or infinity rounds of questions and clarifications, you together will be somewhere between your two initial positions. It could be the case that they are 1% away from their default stance where they started and they won't budge. And you end up thinking, I'm going to pull the cord soon in this conversation because like, fuck wasting my time in theirs anymore. It could be that you are both 99% to the most logical and obvious position available from your combined perspectives and you're feeling super good and you're kind of about ready to shut it down because there's been a lot of progress made. Whenever you want at this juncture, after you've heard their side, step one, step two is you've posited some questions for them and some clarifications and maybe they for you, that would be really sweet if it went both ways. It often doesn't, but you know, like when you ask someone for their opinion in a, uh, what you think is a nice uh, discussion, they rarely ask you for yours. Uh, sometimes they will. And you're like, oh, hey, hey, it's a fellow arguing to convince her. What's up? At some point you may try, and this is a good idea, to restate the current consensus between the two of you. It is a proposed consensus. So do not make the cardinal mistake of being like, all right, so you think this and I think that. No, you do not. You're telling them what they think. They, if they're a persnickety, which many people are in this case, they're going to snap back at you and bad things will happen. So you have a proposed consensus. So you can say something like, all right, so I'm kind of thinking, it seems to me that you think that, you know, uh, we should sacrifice all of our unborn to Hades, the God of the underworld. And I think like, maybe we should do like, uh, not a ton of that. Cause like babies are cool and they grow up to be productive individuals. Um, but I think maybe we can agree that like, you know, like uh, some people are really terrible and if they got sacrificed, it would be the worst thing in the world. Maybe some people are kind of cool. Maybe not everyone should be sacrificed. What do you think? Or something that invites them to render their opinion on your proposed consensus because you're being so fucking polite and so fucking gentle. You never want to tell them what they're thinking because also philosophically that would be wrong. You want to know what they're thinking because how can you know if you got closer to the truth together, if you're the only person fucking vomiting shit out of your mouth, you're telling people what they think. And then they're like, okay, I guess that's not what I think. And then they're no closer to truth. You're a fucking scumbag. Like you always were and you fuck off thinking you won. It's always proposed. Now they might disagree and they'd be like, no, 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 no. 
Hades, the god of the underworld, needs every human baby to sacrifice. No good babies, no bad babies. They all need to die. And you're like, okay. So you can come back to step number one where you're like, okay, so your position is, and you're asking them questions again, step two, and then back to step three. But at some point, usually they'll end up nodding their head. And that point is likely to come if you start out a bit too bold in your consensus uh, proposition and you you uh, rarefy the air a little bit. You you give a little bit more distance, push them back a little further into where they came from. At some point, they'll be like, okay, okay. Yes, Hades, our dark lord, must feed on child souls. But I guess like in order for more children to be born later in the future so that he can continue to feed on child souls, at least some babies have to be not sacrificed so they can reach reproductive age, summarily breeding, and then making at least more reproducers and also more sacrifices for his holy darkness. All right. All right. All right. Not everyone dies. We've made some headway. Amazing. So you try to recapitulate, which is to restate that intermediate perspective where you have both now arrived at some point. The consensus you have (laughs) might not be ideal from either their perspective or yours. Like, you know, ideally zero babies are sacrificed to Hades, his underworldly gothic darkness. Maybe close to zero as possible. But... It's better to agree a little bit more than not. So it might be partly stating what you agree on and partly what you disagree on. So you think, okay, so we both think that the invasion of Afghanistan was probably in retrospect a bad idea. You think we should have stuck it out and kind of finished it off on the right foot. And I think our dear leader, sweet hearted, flawless president, Joe Biden, uh, did the right thing by pulling us out of Afghanistan, causing fucking total disarray. Uh, and they could be like, yeah, like, okay. We know where we agree. We know where we disagree. Cool. We started this thinking we disagreed on everything, by the way. So it's progress. I do encourage you as funny as that last thing might sound to put the onus on what you agree on, because at the very least it, um, kind of promotes this unity trend between the two of you. Because you, you, that may not be the last time you talk about the war in Afghanistan to that person, to other people, and it may not be the last time they talk to other people. And if they're a super psycho about like, hey, Joe Biden's the best and he made all the right decisions, if you both agree that the war in Afghanistan maybe should have never started and you both agree politicians make some stupid decisions, next time they talk to someone, even if that's all you came to an agreement on, but you really emphasize like, hey, now we do agree politics is fucked up. Am I right? They're like, yep, 100%. The next time they talk to someone, they may be a little bit less inclined to position Joe Biden as king of the universe, flawless in all of his never making mistakes and more inclined to be like, I mean, look, I agree with Biden, but at least, you know, politicians. And then you're a little bit closer to the likely truth, which is to say politicians are often not doing things that are super ideal. Worst case of this whole situation, when you recapitulate the what you think the intermediate position is or intermediate perspective between the two of you, is that you really know what you disagree about specifically, which is super valuable in its own right, because then you have a very good understanding of what at least that person thinks. And you meet someone who thinks similarly, you're like, oh, fuck, I can start this, this debate from step three, no problem, right? Well, really step one in the argument to convince series, but step three, uh, I, by that I mean like, you know, you already know a lot about what's going on and you can ask very pointed questions right away and divulge them like, hey, so is it correct for me to assume that you think X, Y, Z? And then be like, yeah. That's exactly what I think. That's that's nice because you already had practice on someone with similar views. Best case, you guys pretty much agree. Yay. Like, yes, Joe Biden is Lord. Awesome. And if he runs with Trump as vice president, it'll be the fucking apocalypse. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The reality in most cases is neither one of those, but you will agree at least somewhat more than where you started off. They, you, everyone. More agreement. Not quite perfect harmony, but good enough for now to prepare you for step four of this process, which is the polite egress. You egress when you're done arguing for the time being. A lot of times you just run out of time. You're like, hey, man. He's like, what? Um, My wife's up and brushing her teeth, which means I got to go to work too, I guess, soon. And he's like, LOL, nerd. I know. 
Anyway, TTYL, right? At some point, the sun is back up and you have to get off the internet and go to work. At the very least, and many other reasons to egress from an argument. To this point, you have very likely established some common understanding between the two of you, anywhere from we know that we agree on absolutely nothing, but at least we know that, all the way to, damn, we're pretty much on the same page. And anywhere in between, some understanding very likely has occurred. Before you just stop talking and walk the fuck away or slam your laptop screen and throw it at the fucking, you know, office desk in the corner, think of why you talked to begin with. You talked for many reasons, but the most fundamental one, if you think it through, and if you're doing a good job arguing to convince, is you talked because you're trying to get closer to the truth together. And maybe you talked to get them thinking about this discussion in a bit of their free time later. Because often people are too proud or invested or egotistical or siloed off to make changes in their mental models on the spot. But give them a few days or a few weeks or five times the number of such discussions and they can change their views at the margins. People come around. I've done this. I've straight up lost debates uh, where some, I got served up by people who just knew more than me on a variety of topics, especially when I was younger and I was stupid enough to not parse who the fuck knows what and not make an idiot out of myself, which I still do all the time, but less. And I ended up, I, I, I don't remember ever admitting that I was wrong on the spot. Most of us just like, well, fuck you. I'll beat you up in real life. I never said that, but at least at the very least, fuck you. And then later I was thinking about it, staying up at night, uh, having no one to physically touch me or tell me I'm a good person. And uh, I would be like, God damn it. That fucking stupid insult troll was right. I was wrong. And then the next time I talked to someone, anyone other than him, because I just blocked that fool. Get out of here. I can't be losing on the internet. Next time I talk to someone else, I now carry the opinion of that stupid troll that proved me wrong because I just don't want to be wrong. And I never give them credit, fuck them, but at least I thought about it later. Now, if I really fucking hate them and they really pissed me off, my probability of thinking about it later goes down. I'm like, dude, that fuck that stupid idiot. Fuck that guy. Hey, Scott Video guy, you think we'll get a flag for swearing too much? Ooh. Time to find out. But if that person was somehow properly egressed from the conversation, your probability of thinking about it later and folks you're talking to, their probability of thinking about it later and maybe changing their minds a little bit goes up substantially because in the end, we all want to promote a culture of civil beneficial conversation and how you egress goes a long way to doing that. So to do all that, you want to leave the conversation on the right foot. If you're a dick, they'll be less likely to think of converting to your view later. Like if someone proves to me that abortion is wrong or abortion is right, if they did it in a dickish manner, fuck them. I'm pro-choice or pro-life depending on what the opposite of what they were. But if they were really quite kind about it in a genuine way, I might think about it more and be like, yeah, at the very least, I don't really know what my views on abortion are, even though they were rock solid an hour ago a day ago or a week ago or whatever. So what you want to do is a couple things. Almost always you want to thank them for having a discussion with you. Look, you don't have to do any of this, but you also don't have to watch a stupid video about arguing to convince that so you're already bought in anyway. It's nice to thank people for the discussion. And you can even say that you learned a lot because even if you were 100% right about everything and they were wrong about everything, at least you learned about their opinion how they came to form their opinion, how they communicated their opinion, and you got practice arguing better. So actually you did learn a lot and you should be thankful for the discussion. It was you, the person who's doing arguing to convince that made it a productive discussion. At the very least, just for yourself is good training. So you should be thanking them. And that is a really good thing. Another thing is you want to make friends and not enemies, uh, or at least leave it so that people hate you less. You know, like if you're very polite on disagreeing and you're like, hey man, like, thank you so much for chatting. And, uh, you don't know, think I learned a lot and I'll catch you later. They may be like, all right, all right, get out of here. Fuck you. But they don't hate you as much as they would have if you were like, boom, middle fingers, pussy. I was right about everything and you're a fucking idiot. Also, you've never had sex with a consenting adult. You just throw that in there. It really stinks. So with that in mind, 
with the whole arguing to convince process and leaving off in a very nice tone, egressing politely, let's think about how this weaves into the mission of this channel and how this argumentation style might help. All right, so what is this channel's mission? Here's what we're going to be doing in videos that start like, gee, soon. Actually, let me look at my handy dandy video folder. Yeah, the videos right after this one are going to be not these intro philosophical setting up the scene for the channel videos, but actual content videos about specific issues at a time. We're going to go issue by issue, idea by idea. We are going to try to understand the issues that we talk about. And by we, I mean the royal we, because it's really just me, a laptop, uh, lighting, uh, Scott the video guy. I, I don't know what he does when this is recorded, because sure, shit, this is way too boring for him. I'm thinking he's just like favoriting porn for later, my best guess. Or doing work. He's very studious. In any case, porn it is. So we're going to try, and by we, I really do mean you, the viewer, who's in the comments, and myself in front of the camera, and of course, Scott the video guy. We're going to try to understand issues. We're going to try to steel man the perspective that we, we may not want to agree with. I'll explain what all that means later. If you don't know, if you know, sweet. We are going to try to red team. A steel manning, uh, fuck it, I'll just explain it quick anyway. Steel manning is when you take the worst position possible in a discussion, you can see how could it be true? What is the best feature of this position? What caricatured, warped way of reality can we look at to be like, actually, that's a good point. Red teaming is when you do the opposite. You take your shibboleths, your ideas that you think are the most true and most valuable, and you try to criticize the living fuck out of them. That's how you get closer to the truth, not by buttressing your best ideas, but by attacking the shit out of them. We're going to try to work out some insight, and if it's government policy we're talking about, economic, social stuff, we're trying to recommend policies or sort of better ways of thinking about an issue, more likely paths to the truth than not. I am not here to preach unilateral ideas is purely good or purely bad for a few reasons. Number one, all good things have downsides. At the very least, opportunity cost. The worst part about sex is that I'm not eating a sandwich. Could combine the two. It never works out that well. Scott the Video Guy, what do you think about mixing sex and food? You're talking about Seinfeld, a comedy show. Yeah, he also uh, listened to the, the game at the same time. It was a trifecta. Dude, he's the fucking man. <laughs> he just put it away. Yeah, yeah sounds great for me. She's like, hey, do you want a sandwich? You're like, no, bitch, I already did that. <laughs> While I did you, girl. Shazam. In any case, all good things have downsides. Many bad things have benefits. And we're going to try to do kind of an even-handed attempt at serious thinking that considers all the nuances uh, because we're like going to be talking about some pretty serious issues. Not always, but uh, most of the time. And there are so many one-sided, totally myopic takes out there already. We don't need to contribute to that shit. If I got polemical and just yelled at you about how true shit is, I'd just be one in a million motherfuckers out there. And some of them are right about shit, but we can do a little bit better than that. So we are going to, over the next, until however many videos we get canceled or I croak, we're going to dive into some controversial issues potentially not just to soak in them and get cool clickbait, which we will absolutely clickbait the fuck out of everything. Be warned. We're trying to get that algo, baby, because this shit isn't free. You feel me? Your boy's trying to make money on this channel, too. It's just going to be insane pictures of pigs eating babies, babies eating pigs, crazy, irrelevant captions. Scott, the video guy, you're ready to make this shit, right? Born for it. Clickbait 1000. But we're not just trying to soak in controversy for no good reason. Um... Because parsing controversy and getting a little bit closer to the truth can just be super, bring a higher chance of progress for everyone, which is really what this whole channel is about. So what you see or hear recommended by myself uh, on this channel, policy-wise especially, is a best guess up for infinite modification. And that modification will occur by producing logic uh, and evidence and discussing it. And then we can convince each other and find probably a likely closer path to the truth. I'll make a ton of mistakes along the way. Certainly have made many in this video, no doubt. My views are always tentative, held at various degrees of certainty between 
this might be the case, this thing I think, all the way to this is highly likely the case, I'm not in a position to do certainties, no one really is, I just admit it, I guess. I'll be up updating my views all along and learning along with you guys anytime you want. Just share your thoughts about anything I say or anything I don't in the comments so that we can learn and grow and get just a little bit closer to progress together. Isn't that nice? Folks, doesn't that sound baller? I think it does. Next time, I'll be doing a topic video about something super duper interesting. Offhand, fuck if I know what that is. Should I tell them, Scott, the video guy? Should I look it up in my handy dandy folder? Do we want to tell the folks what's coming up next time or do we want to surprise them? Leave it to chance. Chance, take it away. See you guys next time.